What is going on guys? So today I wanted to do a video on the state of ESO. I think this is a vitally important video for a multitude of reasons. The first reason being is if you are a veteran player looking to come back to this game, you maybe you took a break and you're looking to spend a little bit more time. Is it worth it? Uh, if you are a newer player looking to get into like the in-game content like PvP or PvE, is this game worth even trying in the first place? But also, since the iteration of Update 36, this game has been nothing short of a dumpster fire for at least the past week. And yes, they have fixed some things, but there are still some things that are lingering around that have yet to be fixed that are game-breaking for not just PvP players, but also PvE players as well. So as a quick disclaimer here, for those who don't know who I am, don't know my content very well, I've played ESO since launch on console, since back in 2015, with well over 10,000 hours of gameplay. And that is not to brag. I think it is fair to say that I've thoroughly enjoyed my time playing ESO throughout the years. Yes, you can say that the combat is something I thoroughly enjoy the most, but I think most of all, I've enjoyed playing with Pink, I have enjoyed playing with my friends and building a community here, playing ESO. And it, it hurts me really to, to talk about this game negatively. I want this game to be what it used to be, to do what it used to do. This was a stalwart of an MMO when it first released. Yes, it had some problems, every game does. But after it got established and got fixed, there was no better gameplay combat, in my opinion, than ESO. It's better than WoW, it's better than Final Fantasy, it's better than Guild Wars. When ESO works and is running right, this game is unbeatable. It just simply is. And it has been for a large majority of the community that has really fell in love with this style of combat. I go play different games like Guild Wars, and I'm like, yeah, if, 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 if Guild Wars was more like ESO, it would be better. Like, ESO has set the standard for games that, that I have enjoyed, but it also has let a lot of us in the community down for a very, very long time. And more so now, in this past, you know, two updates, than really in the whole course of the game combined. It has really made people disappointed. ESO's biggest scar for the longest time has been performance. Now this negatively impacts the PvP community more than it does the PvE community, as PvE players typically don't really have performance issues unless they are doing in-game trials where they need their abilities to work at, at the highest level. If you're just questing and, and doing some small dungeons here and there, you're never gonna run into performance issues at all. But in, in the high stress situations, like in trials and PVP, you will run into a lot of laggy uh, scenarios where the game is just simply unplayable and really unfun to do. And it just feels clunky and just feels like peanut butter, honestly. Uh, that's what it feels like you're playing in. Uh, and, and abilities don't, fire or function correctly, things are delayed. If you've played any, any game that's laggy, you know what I'm talking about. But that has been ESO's biggest scar. And this actually saw a glimpse of getting fixed uh, with PCNA announcement of getting new servers and the implementation of these servers. And according to a lot of people at the time, the performance got better. You could play during prime time. There was really little to minimal uh, skill delay lag and there could be hundreds of people on screen fighting at one time and everything was great. And I had to take people's word for it because I had not played on PC and A yet. So I didn't have a PC account. I hadn't swapped over yet. I just recently swapped over about two months ago. And in my experience from swapping over from console to PC, I have maybe experienced a marginal of 10 to 15 percent better performance during the most situations and that's it and that's with the new servers on pc and a while console was on the older servers still so what does this mean i think there's a few reasons for this i think a lot of what happened is after the server hardware refresh and they implemented new servers the database really wasn't loaded down yet and then a lot of people heard about the new pc and a servers finally getting fixed uh, and still yet to be fixed everywhere else including pc eu and console and uh, you know console you know playstation and xbox so with the biggest news about pc and a finally getting better server performance everybody swapped over to pc and a where you could actually get better ping if you're from eu or at least better performance you know your ping may not be as good it may be 20 30 points higher but you're getting overall better performance on the NA server rather than the EU server, and that one's supposedly even closer to you. 
So with all that being said, I think, and then with consoles, people coming from their respective servers, a lot of my friends, you know, Nice, Kirkoff, Vex, you know, a lot of the PVPers on um, PlayStation North American went over to PC. And I think with a lot of the migration to that server overloaded it. And I think finally when I arrived, there has been some, some stuttering of performance issues that felt just like console, if I'm being honest. And I think that that has a lot to do with it. Maybe the servers help fix it. For the most part, it is better, but I would contribute that more to just my computer is better than my PlayStation. I wouldn't contribute that to the servers as much. However, there is more server hardware fixes coming for the other platforms. I think it's coming at the first of 2023 for PCEU and then console servers after that. Don't know when really a, an exact ETA on that. Hopefully they are finally fixed in the middle to the end of, of next year. That is probably gonna be a reasonable time frame to expect if they can get all the parts in. So now that you kind of have a better picture of, of the performance issues, let's talk about update 35 and update 36. I think this is the best way to describe ESO's current state right now. You can look at the past, you can look at all the bad balance patches, you can look at a multitude of things. But the easiest way to really look at this is, is twofold. In my opinion, ESO has really adapted, or at least the dev team and their direction from the game, it may not be the dev team themselves, it could be the higher ups. I don't want to put blame on uh, any one person um, because a lot of people, you know, they just do their job. They just do what they're told, right? And I don't want to put blame on just one person. I think a lot of it has to do with the higher ups focusing on other things like their new MMO that I talked about in a recent video and also focusing on Starfield. You know, it, there's, there's a lot of things going on. I think ESO is one of their biggest cash earners uh, for Zenimax. However, I think they put the game on back burners to really focus on cosmetics rather than focusing on improving the game, you know, just rather than adding in new stuff for PVP, rather than adding in new skill lines or content or classes like that. They really just focus on keeping the game afloat and adding cosmetic items to sell in the crown store. And that's pretty much it. That's my opinion. I think that they're going into their later stages of the life cycle of the game. Um, with newer games coming out like Ashes of Creation, they have a lot of competition with that. They definitely can't compete, but they have to want to invest into the game more so than they currently are. So back with update 35 and update 36. A, a recurring theme with the game, like just imagine this for a second, you're playing Call of Duty, okay? Or you're playing some game that, that you have experience with. And there's four updates. And there's the first update where there's the Templar class is like the strongest class. And then the next update, they nerfed Templar to the ground and now Dragonite are the best class. And then they nerfed Dragonite to the ground in the th third update and now Night Lady are the strongest class of the game. And this is a repetitive cycle of over buffing and over nerfing certain classes and basically changing the whole format of the game every three months. And this has been going on for the past two years at this point. Um, with the hybridization of skills and abilities, just with a whole multitude of things that have been going on over time that just kind of fall under the bridge at this point. That you, there, There's been so many changes, you can't remember them all. That's how many changes there's been. Anyways, in Update 35 was the biggest one where they were ch wanting to change the function of light attacks and heavy attacks to where they didn't scale off of your stats. So basically, if you had a thousand damage, your light attacks would deal the same amount of damage as somebody with 10,000 weapon damage. It's, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, you, you don't want tanks dealing the same amount of damage as damage dealers. I mean, at least from my experience of, of what I want from a game, I don't want tanks being able to deal light attack damage the same because that is a very big deal. Which of those things with the feedback from the community with, it wasn't just feedback, it was an uproar from the community. It was a it was like pulling teeth for them to not do that which they still reduced the damage of light attacks by 10 percent and changed a lot of core fundamentals of staves and melee weapons quite extensively which is just water under the bridge and, and i really don't want to get into all of it but the, one of the other main things that changed was they nerfed damage over time effects and this negatively impacted 
the PVE environment. Uh, they they were really going for the accessibility option for ESO where they wanted it to be easier for people to DPS. And I get where they're coming from, but the way they implemented it in update 35, that was last update, really didn't hit the mark. It missed the mark completely where people actually did dealt less DPS even with the changes. So it's not, they, no, no DPS increase. Like if you were maybe just dealing light attacks and then dealt, did your damage over time effects every second or two, uh, yeah, you maybe saw a DPS increase if you were like a basic player that just entered the game. But anywhere to where you're trying to go to end game trials, you were negatively impacted. And this stayed true. Um, they went with this because for whatever reason, they, they wanted to go with it. Uh, that was a very bad decision, in my opinion, for Zoss to do. Uh, and, and I don't even PvE. I'm mainly a PvP player. So this really irritated a lot of people in the PvE community where people lost DPS so they couldn't get into harder trials and harder dungeons that they wanted to do because Zenimax directly nerfed them just because they wanted to focus on the quote-unquote power creep which they actually helped create quite a bit and we can go into that really quickly here the power creep basically um from an in-game player's perspective is it was also done is made major and minor buffs so easily obtained you can talk about Minor Courage, Major Courage, Major Berserk, Minor Berserk. You have all these extra damage modifiers that directly contribute to the power creep where you have high-end players doing 100,000, 120,000, 130,000 DPS while you have the mid-tier players doing maybe 60 or 70,000 where they're not as optimal with the bar rotation and can't keep their effects up. That was the idea and the concept of what Zoss was going for even though they didn't directly implement it um, as good as they needed to. What they should do, in my opinion, is nerf the buffs that that has been implemented into the game. They need to nerf Major Courage, Minor Courage. Those give 430 weapon and spell damage for Major and 215 for Minor. If they nerf that by 50%, it would directly impact the power creep where you would have people rein in the top end DPS, but it's obviously gonna lower the mid DPS as well. The only difference is, is higher tier players have more optimal uptimes of these buffs. So if you have a mid tier group versus a higher tier group, lowering the uptime of said buffs will directly lower the top in DPS while not really affecting as much the lower in DPS if they don't have uh, as much uptime on those buffs, if that makes any sense. I know I went off on qu quite a bit of a tangent there, but that is, is one of the core fundamentals of of why the community is so upset and the state of ESO is in a dying state right now where the, the the developers I don't know if they even play their game enough to really understand I'm sure I'm sure some do but the people that make the decisions I don't feel like they understand their game as much as the players do uh, at the end game level uh, I think you should balance around the end game and then everything else will fall in place there's nothing wrong with making things more accessible for newer players However, I think that you should have to put some effort into getting better at the game than just being handed a trophy. Like, you shouldn't walk into ESO as a level 10 and go into an in-game trial. I mean, I think most people can agree with that. I think it should take time to get gear, to get understand the game, uh, to understand mechanics before you can even go into doing uh, in-game content. But that's, that's besides the point. That was last update. We can also talk about the lack of the Q&A that they were supposed to do about said update, which is another pet peeve of mine. They say, we're gonna do a Q&A about the changes for update 35. This never happened. They were gonna answer questions from the community, never happened. And we've heard ghost stories about this. There's there, There's been nothing, nothing at all from the developers. There's, they like to talk about communication and then they go into saying, oh, we're going to talk about it, and then they never do. They really fall, like, with, with broken promises um, is, a, is another theme that Zoss seems to do sometimes. Now, let's get into update 36. This was an update that was supposed to really not change a whole lot in the game. They were doing some class adjustments to Warden, making them a little bit stronger, uh, it, focusing on ice damage, but overall it was a pretty simple update uh, with the backlash from the community really wanting an update that wasn't changing dramatically. Like in the past two years, we've had it to where every three months, pretty much, there's been drastic changes where they say, oh, we're not going to really do anything drastic uh, in this update. And then in the next 
two weeks, there's a PTS cycle with everything changing again and wanting to change the entire dot effects and whatnot, which we had in update 35. So this has been a reoccurring theme. So in update 36, it was supposed to flip the script. It was supposed to be different. It was supposed to be just same old, same old from update 35 with a few minor tweaks and adjustments, which is what most people I think wanted. However, this thing released a can of worms like I've never seen before in my life. Crashing on launch day. You couldn't log into the game. You crashed as soon as you loaded in. There was something wrong with add-ons. And then there was some, some issues where you couldn't even load into your character screen. You kept on getting a DC. No error message, no nothing. Just disconnect. That was on day one. And this also was on day one where you went into Cyrodiil and you would put Siege down on the ground and it would not despawn. So you had endless Siege around. You had people building circles around Imperial City and they did not go away. You could not use them, but they were always there. And this was a very big issue because you couldn't defend a keep if your keep had 25 of 25 Siege. So during that time frame, the whole first day of Up B36 was completely unplayable for PvP. And then the next day you had another game breaking bug that was affecting Dragonite standard and Dragonite abilities in general, which was making them last pretty much forever and could stack multiple effects. So you could have the ultimate called Dragonite standard, which you could put down 30, 40 of them at a time. And you could stack them all up and you were dealing 450, 500,000 DPS, which is obviously not working as intended. And the servers had to get taken down. Keep in mind, on an update that was not supposed to change really much of anything, changed everything about the game and made it completely unplayable. Now there are still issues that have yet to be resolved and really talked about too much. And the, another one that I keep wanting to talk about is the block bug. This is a very, very big issue, especially for console players. I did a video on talk about a lot of these issues a few days ago, but this was still one that's yet to be talked about much uh, or address by Zoss. So basically, in essence, what happens is whenever you block and then roll dodge, your block drops, which is a very big deal because in PvP, uh, dodge rolling with controller, it requires you to hold block in the first place. Um, now, this is also, uh, from what I've seen, uh, affects PvE as well. And it's not just block and roll dodge, it affects like block, light attack, and roll dodge altogether, um, where it really affects tanks as well in PvE but it also obviously affects PvP where I do most of my uh, gameplay. So I don't know a, a whole lot about the PvE aspect, but it is definitely a game breaking bug. And if it is not fixed by the, it's supposed to be fixed the 14th to the 15th, I'm not sure. It's on the next incremental patch. If it does not fix then, that's definitely a very big issue. And I probably won't PvP until this is fixed. It's not a huge, huge deal. Like obviously the Dragonite bugs, but this is still a massive problem for PvP because if you can't block, you can't block stun sometimes, you can't block big damage, and it can really make you frustrated. And I just don't wanna have the opportunity uh, to get frustrated. So with that being said, now that you guys have a clear picture of kind of what's going on in a quick TLDR version uh, in a few minutes, update 35 and update 36 have been a very, very bad update. Uh, to say the least. It's really hampered down on the community spirits. The overall population of the game has actually gone down since update 36 was released, which typically you'd like to see the update bring people's attention up uh, instead of down. But that's where the game sits right now. It's playable now after uh, like almost two weeks, but there still is some issues that <laughs> I think need uh, to be talked about. Uh, first, there are mythics that are bugged. You pay for a mythic in the High Isle chapter. Uh, and if you have ESO Plus, you should be able to get these mythics in the Galen Zone. Everybody got the Galen Zone for free because we did the new, whatever that event was, which I didn't even participate in. Anyways, so this was supposed to be where you could access the, you know, the zone and you're, you're, you had to buy High Isle to even get it. So you're kind of still paying for it but it's a little bit different, obviously. Anyways, there are mythic leads that are still bugged that you cannot get. Uh, they're not working as intended. Two out of the three mythics released, I believe it is the block one, the girdle, and what's the other one? It is the Storm Reaver's Cavort and the Cerebane's Ward. Now, both of these are bugged currently. You can still get the Cerebane's Ward uh, 
from what I've gathered, you have to respect your crafting to get um, blacksmithing's surveys for void steel at that uh, at that 14 level or 140 CP level in order to get that lead there. So whenever you do your writs, uh, you can still get it. But if you're doing it at max level, you're not going to be able to get that lead. Uh, and the Storm Reavers Cavorts, or however you want to say it, the one that gives you magic recovery uh, and basically trades out salmon for magic. Uh, there's a lead there that's not even working. And we don't, at least from my research, don't even know where it drops from. So yeah, there is a mythic item that you have paid for that you cannot obtain currently because there is a bugged um, drop rate or whatever the case is. Don't know where it even drops from. I don't know if, it, if it's even getting fixed on the next incremental patch. I think it's the 14th, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So that is the state of ESO currently. And if update 37 does not fix this disastrous, not even just the gameplay itself where the game's unplayable, it's, you know, laggy, there's been crashing going on and all these bugs and issues, not even just that, like that's, that's a given. If that is the way it's going to be uh, in update 37, it's definitely going to still be a bad update. But the overall gameplay direction of the game from the developers, if they don't turn tide and turn a different direction uh, and actually have a good update where they actually make some good adjustments, I mean, we could talk about for days about the balance. And in my opinion, class balance is pretty decent right now. But I think that there's a lot of issues, especially pertaining to healing and damage mitigation and the overall power creep, which we talked about a little bit ago with the major and minor buffs. If those are not addressed, I think those are the overarching issues of the game, not really class balanced. Yes, you could see some things adjusted like Polar Wind on Warden, which is absolutely disgusting right now. And Warden in general is kind of a bit overtuned. But overall, Warden has been in one of the worst states it's been for a while. It's actually just recently started to get some decent buffs to make the class more viable. So let it have its time to shine just for a little bit. And over, like I said, overall class balance, there could be some adjustments. But I think the biggest issue right now is vampire passives, the power creep with major and minor buffs, and the heal stacking with the radiant regenerations in ball groups. That is the biggest issue plaguing at least ESO PvP right now, which I'm going to make some suggestions in a separate video. I'm going to talk about these way more in depth um, than just presenting the issue and also presenting different ways to fix it. But overall, that is the state of ESO right now. There's bugs everywhere. Can't get access to mythic items. It's just overall a shit show right now. Post update 36. They have fixed some issues. But there's still a lot of problems that have yet to be fixed and we don't really know an ETA on these fixes. So is this game worth playing? At least right now in its current state, if you want a PvP, you can probably still enjoy it to some degree. But if you want a flawless experience like, like you really miss, like the good times you miss about ESO, it's still not a good time to come back. We'll see with update 37. Um, if you are a newer player and you just plan on focusing on the PvE aspect, don't, don't plan on going into the end game stuff like Trials and PvP, then th yeah, this game is fine. I think that, that that's what this game does well is for the newer players, it really focuses on those type of players. But if you're looking at this game for the long term end game, uh, you probably missed its prime. It was way better back in the day in 2016, 2017 ESO, at least in my opinion, that was the old nostalgic days of, of the game that I, I really miss a lot. I wish they would go back to the roots. I think they've abandoned their in-game player base and really don't take the heart to what they have to say and just look at um, dollar bills and that's it, if I'm being honest. They don't care about making a, a good quality product. They, they worry about making costumes for the crown store, making crown crates absolutely the best cosmetics in the game and don't want to reward you for actually playing in the game, which has actually been kind of refreshing um, since I've played Guild Wars 2 over the past uh, few days. I'm not going to quit ESO, not even really taking a break, just exploring other games right now and just trying to have some fun. Like, when you compare the ESO to Guild Wars, there's some things Guild Wars does right, and there's also some things ESO does right. Some things Guild Wars does wrong, some things ESO does wrong. Maybe that's just the way it is right now. Hopefully Ashes of Creation is different, Maybe uh, I'm lying to myself and believing so. 
But Ashes of Creation, honestly, is the last hope for the MMO genre, I think, for right now, where every game is either heavily over-monetized or heavily paid to win, or just completely abandons its core principles of what it started with in the first place. But that's it for me, guys. This was my heart-to-heart -heart about the ESO as it sits right now in Update 36. And that's going to be it for me, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.